Hello, my name is Larry Merck. I'm the GIMP Wizard. Today we're going to do a fast draw digital painting using GIMP, our free digital editor. And you might have noticed already that this is not going to be a short, fast drawing. But uh, basically, I call them fast draw all my paintings that I do of special, exciting things like holidays, which this is a holiday. So here we've got our nice Happy Easter picture that we're going to be doing. Sorry if it's a little cut off on the top there, I see, but um, anyhow, uh, this Happy Easter painting I think is going to have a lot of nice techniques to use. It's uh, an okay painting, maybe not the best, but first of all we've got a border that comes over our picture with nice tulip shape, so I think that's a nice thing uh, to be able to do. And how would we ever make an egg shape? We know how to make spheres. I'm going to show you how we're going to make these nice eggs, and then we're even going to show you how to use presets for brushes. I'm not going to do much with it, but we'll touch on that. So there should be a lot to learn. So we're going to have a happy, healthy, hippity hoppy Easter here. And that's my great alliteration for the day. So I hope you enjoyed it. And let's get right to doing some nice painting. All right, we're going to just start out here in GIMP with our 1920 by 1080 white canvas. And the first thing we do when we want to have a fun Easter is we want to draw some nice, pretty colored Easter eggs. So I'm going to go to File, and New, and I'm going to first create one big Easter egg that's going to be a thousand by a thousand, something like that. And we're going to make it into severe, so it's actually not going to end up being this big. But what we're going to do is I'm going to use the Blend tool, so we'll say L for Blend. I'm going to make this image, it looks like it's too big for the screen, so we're going to zoom and say fit image to window so we can see the entire thing. So I already did L to get the blend tool, but let's pick a gradient now. So we go down to our gradients, or we could have clicked on this to pull up our gradients if we wanted to. And there's actually a gradient that comes with GIMP called pastels, and that would be quite appropriate for painting eggs. And we're just going to start at the bottom, go up toward the top here and hold down control to make sure it's perfectly vertical and there we've got our nice gradient for coloring an egg like it might look now just for this big egg I'm going to play around and have a little bit of fun so I'm going to go filters and you know how you can smudge down eggs to make nice ripple designs let's try to do that this might not come out perfectly but hey it'll be a little bit of fun and it might it might be nice so we do a ripple and you're going to have to play around with this and unfortunately with this light pastel color, you might not see it terribly well, but let's take a look. We're going to want to ripple in the vertical direction, and you see how it's got some black smudges up here? That's because the edges we need to put smear so we don't get those black smudges. And for the size, I think we want the amplitude to be a little bigger so it makes bigger smudges or whatever you call them. Not huge. You can see the purple coming up now from the bottom here. Hopefully uh, you can see this in the video. And the period is it's way too much I'd say so we're gonna make the period bigger so that you'll get bigger smudges. So I'm just gonna do something like that and hopefully uh, there you go. You can actually see it or at least on my monitor you can see it. Hopefully in the video you can. So next thing I'm gonna do is make it into a sphere because we don't have anything to make it into an egg shape immediately. So we're gonna go to filters and we're gonna do map right up here and then we're going to map it onto an object and we're going to update with a live preview so that we'll be able to see the changes we make and right here we do have sphere and we're going to say we need a transparent background we just want the sphere we don't need the background and for the light now I want the light to be coming straight at it so instead of putting it negative 0.5 if you put the light at 0 0.5 that's coming straight on and the light's coming up from a little bit of an angle. We could uh, change that and make that 0.5 also maybe. Who knows, whatever you want to do. So hopefully the light's coming from straight forward now. But it's certainly making a big specular blur of white light there in the middle. So we're going to turn off the specular blur or the specular light there entirely. I'm going to turn off the highlight entirely and then we'll turn the diffuse down to 0 0.5 or so and now we're getting a little bit more add a little bit to the ambient light maybe so that's getting close to 
what we want our egg to look like, something like that. I put 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So let's just say OK. And now we're going to get what's going to be our egg, but it still looks like a sphere. So watch this brilliant trick. See, here's where you just make use of the tools you have. So I'm going to select a rectangle. We're going to start out above the and outside of the sphere. And I'm going to drag it down to halfway on the sphere. And then what I'm going to do is say scale. So we're going to click on the scale tool. Now if we drag this straight up, just click right in the center here in the middle of the top and drag it up wherever it looks like a nice egg to you. Click, say scale, and there you've got your egg. So now we can click on M for move and just anchor it down and it actually looks all right. It does do, do a little bit of a line right here, which doesn't look that bad. And I was going to demonstrate how to use the clone tool to fix that, but I'm telling you, it really does not look bad. Um, I think I'll just show you the clone tool because that was part of the lesson that I plan on teaching you anyhow. So if you see a little line there that you don't like, maybe it'll show up better if I do something like magnifying it. Let's say we do one or two even. Uh, you still don't see it a whole lot, but there, I pressed the one on the keyboard to magnify it to one pixel for one pixel. Um, so if we want to go to our clone tool, you would go to here. And what I want to do is clone right above it to write down onto it so that it'll uh, sort of fix that line. So you'd say control click to choose where you're cloning from. And then we're going to go right down onto the line just below it. And then if I do control shift, it's going to draw a straight line, and I'm going to draw a straight line over to here. And then it healed it pretty well there. You can now really not see the line at all because we just cloned the line just above it right onto it. All right, so that's the gist of that. But let's go um, back to make sure we're on the correct layer. We're on the egg. So I'm going to say Control-C to copy. And then we're going to go back to our canvas over here. And I'm going to say Control-V and M to make sure we're on our move tool. And let's move this egg in the final picture you saw. We put it somewhere over here. Who knows? I'm not going to worry exactly. And I'm going to put it on a new layer. So we just click New Layer, and it automatically uh, anchors it onto the new layer. So that's fine. Usually, I like to make sure the layers are all the same size of the image. You can see how it's just got the current layer size being the size of the egg. So I'm going to do a right click and say Layer to Image Size. Otherwise, some funky things happen now and again. Now I'm going to show you how I would make my other eggs, and we're not going to do all of them. I'm just going to do one more just to demonstrate probably. But we'll go File, New, and the other eggs I just made half the size. So I made these 500 by 500. And here we've got that. So now to do another egg, what I would do is choose another gradient, just uh, anything you happen to like. I mean, I ended up doing a purple one. I did gold ones. I mean, you could do any of these gradients, or you could even make up your own gradients and do it, whatever design you want on the egg. But uh, let's see. So I'm going to do L to do our gradient, and we'll start out down at the bottom, go up toward the top once again, hold down the control key, make sure it's perfectly vertical. And now, I don't believe we used any other filters. So I think you can just say, let's see, just say control F. And boom, there we've got our next sphere, which, once again, I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to grab our rectangle select tool. We'll select the top half. Then we're going to stretch it out. So we'll grab our scale tool right here and grab it right from the middle top and drag it up till we think it's looking like a nice egg. We say scale it. And to get rid of this selection, I'm going to do M for the Move tool and just click to anchor it down. And if we go to Layers, we make sure we have this layer highlighted. And then we can just say Control-C to copy that. Now we're going to go over to our image. And we can say Control-V to paste it down. And let's see. What I'm going to want to do, we'll move it. We've still got the Move tool. so let's drag this one down in front of this and then we could do a little rotating while we're at it just sort of like I did in my original picture you just twist it a little bit like that who knows say rotate if you're happy with it and then we're gonna put this on a new layer also so you go new layer 
and there we've got this one in front if we wanted to put it in back you could drag it behind which I did with some of the eggs to give it a little depth so we have different eggs in front of and behind other eggs once again I would normally just say layered image size alright so we've got two eggs in here now I just repeated the process I just kept going actually and just drawing right over this one I would delete the actual egg itself and then I would just do the process over again and put in a new gradient here and all that stuff but I'm not going to waste your time even though I usually do go every step with you this time take it for my word I did all these eggs and we put them something like this so there you go that's like my uh, quick bake thing we put this in the oven and here 20 minutes is what it came out like so there's our bunch of eggs and I put them all on one layer normally I would put everything on a separate layer but this will make it a lot neater so next let's play around with putting some nice grass in and we're just making a simple picture we're not making this photo realistic or anything so what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint we'll grab our paintbrush and here I want to demonstrate how to use a preset tool so after choosing paint we're gonna go to our tool menu here our tool options and go down here to presets now instead of clicking on the brush the size of the brush and whether you want a jitter and all these different options they're actually these presets so we'll click on the presets that we have here and down here you see there's actually grass so there's grass 1 and grass 2 we're going to choose grass 1 and it automatically gives us grass at a certain size that it thinks is good uh, let's see I want to change the color of the grass to make it green though it would be nice if it had done that automatically we're going to do mm, maybe a fairly dark green in the background let's say um, and I don't want to be huge in the background because I'm going to make the grass bigger in the foreground so let's just play around with this and let's see how this grass looks so we're just going to start painting see this is just really uh, a little smaller than I was really hoping for but hey what the heck we're going to just uh, drag that around and we're going to this is going to be grass in the background so don't worry that I'm painting over the eggs once we put this layer in the background you'll see it behind the eggs and we don't need to paint all the way down to the bottom because we're going to put foreground grass in front of this so I do believe that's uh, going to be enough to get our general idea of some background grass so let's go to our layers we'll move oh my god I was drawing it right on top I forgot to even make an extra layer oh my gosh all right undo I'm just uh just cruising along here not even thinking so let's do a new layer and let's duplicate that because I want one layer in front and one behind so let's pull this one down because this one's really supposed to be behind and we'll paint it where it's supposed to be and you'll actually see what it's going to end up looking like so here we've got the grass behind the eggs going something like this so let's uh try to fill this in with some solid green there might uh, be a better way if you want to just get a big brush and block it in or something like that but hey whatever this doesn't take that long so there we've got our background dark green with small grass so then we're going to go to our foreground grass which is going to be a nice brighter green because it's closer to us so we'll take this nice cheerful bright happy green and we've still got the same brush and everything but all we do is make it bigger and so now we put some nice foreground grass in and see how this is coming out in front of our picture so it's gonna give the picture a couple layers of depth we'll have the foreground grass and you're gonna have layers of nice colored um, Easter eggs and then you're going to have background grass and then we're going to have sky so it's always great to have a bunch of layers to your painting it makes it look much better all right now we want to put in a little sky I think would be a good idea so let's go to our layers and we're just going to add a new layer we'll click here for new layer and the sky we're not going to do anything tricky we don't want to waste too much time on that and this is just a simple uncomplicated picture I'm just gonna make it go from yellow to orange so I'm gonna grab a bright yellow and we we'll just do a gradient going to a light orange so we'll grab orange here say okay I'll do L to do a gradient and we're gonna go from yellow here and usually go from lighter to darker at the top 
of the screen. We'll go control to make it perfectly straight. Oh my gosh, I'm using this gradient. That was a mistake. I want to switch our gradient to be our standard foreground to background. It was still using the a different gradient when we clicked on the grass. It was actually put in a gradient there, but no worries. We can uh, change this very quickly. Control, click, and there we've got the yellow that we wanted. Okay, another feature of this picture that I really was one of my main reasons for drawing this was I want to show how to make a cool looking border that actually sticks out onto the screen with special shapes on it. And in the meantime, I don't want the border to just be a rectangle, which I could do very easily, but I want the border to be sort of wavy and fun. So let's try grabbing a brush and basically I want to just grab a circle. I didn't use this originally, but Basically, this is a circle, which is uh, more or less what I want to do. And I want to make it fairly big. We're going to go to, actually, I'm going to go to drawing with a pencil because I want it to be purely black and white, no shading. And then I want to make the size be about 200, I think, because I want the border to go 100 onto the screen and 100 off. Let's see, though, this, that might be right. Let's try it out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a jitter so that as it draws it, it's going to move by a little bit. It says 0.2. That might be reasonable. Let's try it out. So we go from this corner. I click here. Oh, it's looking like the wrong brush. And first of all, I'm also drawing it on the wrong thing. Did I make a new layer? Let's try layers. Let's go on top here and add a new layer first. And then let's see if I've got everything set up right or not. Maybe it's looking like it might not be coming out right, but we've got that brush. And you never know. When you start using presets, you got to be careful because the preset might all of a sudden be sensitive setting options that you don't normally set like the opacity what mode you're drawing in and all those things so you, after using a preset you got to be a little bit careful what it might have changed so let's again click here and then go control shift and then we'll go to the top of the screen and hopefully we'll make it a little bit wavy there you go make sort of an interesting outline nothing super but so then we're going to go from there and we'll go control shift and go to there and then I click again and we're going to go control shift and we'll draw a line down to the bottom here then we'll go control shift and over to the right hand corner and we'll get at least a somewhat interesting border for starters alright now as usual if I think about it I put a new layer in and this time I don't know that you really have to but again I'm just used to doing it in case I mess up which I do plenty often, then I can usually just uh, get rid of that layer or redo that. Alright, let's take a look at the internet where we're going to get a piece of clip art. I go to my usual place, clker.com, and I typed in tulip, as you can see up at the top here. So then if we just page down once, I do believe I page down a little bit too far, but uh, basically here's our tulip. We just click on that and it'll bring that up at the top of the screen and then it's just a matter of choosing what size we want to download so we click choose download and then I'm going to choose large because the more accurate the better it's still not going to be too large even if we choose large so then I'm going to right click and say copy image and boom we've got a, the image is now copied to our clipboard so we just go back to GIMP and we're just going to say control V and we're going to place this where we want to and I'm going to do M to move it to where we want so we're going to grab it I'm going to put one tulip uh, pretty much somewhere down here and then I'm going to click here to anchor it down then I'll say control V and then we're just going to drag it and draw it where we want to draw it so this one we might put it way up here sort of on the edge like that and then I anchor that one down by clicking off of it and then I say control V again and you know play around you could do a bunch of different images do this however you want I'm just trying to give you ideas I still always say you know you guys are the artists and I know you're gonna do a lot better painting and come up with more brilliant ideas than I ever will I'm just trying to show you fun ideas so here we put that down and boom, there we've got our roses or our tulips. And this one, I would tend to 
uh, bring this one down to merge it with the edge a little bit and put some black there. But anyhow, I'm not going to do it. You can see my final picture if you want to see how it ended up looking. But I'm going to merge these two layers down so we can work with it. And you'll see where you go merge down. We could have just originally painted them together. Okay, but now for our trick to make this border more interesting instead of just a plain black, I'm going to do, use my Alt-A to select Alpha to Selection. But again, you could right click and choose Alpha to Selection or use whatever shortcut you may have made for that. And now comes the trick. We're going to do select. And we're going to shrink our selection. And I'm going to shrink it by three pixels. And then we're going to fill this smaller selection in with whatever we want. We could do white. We could do some other color. But I'm going to put it on a new layer. And on this layer, let's fill it with anything we want. But in the actual picture, what I did is I did another gradient. So I do L for blend tool. Then we choose a gradient. And I chose the pastels once again for Easter. And all we do is start at the bottom, go up to the top, hold down the control key to make sure it's vertical, and boom, there we've got it. So now you've got I do control shift A to get rid of the selection so you can see this is basically our picture. And then I wrote Happy Easter across the top. Choose any nice font you want. You could put somebody's name if you want to make a card to them along the bottom, something like that. I think we've got uh, plenty of tricks that we already put into this. You can see my final painting at uh, LarryMerk.DeviantArt.com anyhow, but uh, I think this gave you enough of a lesson on how to do it. So let's see if we go here. That's the picture that you're going to see. So I hope you like this video. Share it with your friends. Please do subscribe to Gimp Wizard on the YouTube channel. And as always, Take a look at LarryMerk.DeviantArt.com to see all my great paintings. Happy Easter, everybody. Bye-bye.